Hello, everyone. My name is Julie McVeigh, and this is Unordinary Made Ordinary, where we talk about extraordinary experiences of everyday people. And today, our guest is Darlene Taylor. Welcome, Darlene. Thank you. Thank you for meeting with me. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to get right into it. If you wouldn't mind, could you just share a little bit about yourself, um, maybe where you grew up, family, uh, kids? Ma'am, I'm the youngest of uh, six children, and uh, I'm 68 now, and so unfortunately, they are all have went to... Crossed over. Crossed over? Mm -hmm. All six. Wow. Well, yeah. So I'm kind of on my own, but we're, I live here in uh, Moscow, Idaho, have made like a lot of friends through church and everything, and they're like my foster family. Oh. And uh, life is good. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Tucson, uh, Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. I traveled up here because of my daughter uh, going to Washington State University. Ah. And she didn't want me living alone down there. So I came up here to be near her. Okay. She also lives in Moscow, Idaho. She currently lives in Mo Moscow? Yes, she does. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm um, curious, growing up in your family, were you religious upbringing? Yes, very. My oh. mother was, uh, I mean, we, we went to church every time the doors were open. Uh, <laughs> grew up pretty much Baptist. Okay. And, uh, I had been on track. I wanted to go into the mission field. Uh, through the Bible college, but somehow it gotten sidetracked, married the wrong person, and mm. I had a, a Sid baby, a little girl that died. Oh. Yeah. And I was just angry at God. Mm -hmm. So I got away from him for several years. Mm -hmm. But when doing things on my own didn't work. I found my way back. And okay. when this near death experience happened, I really found my way back. Mm. And I went, oh no. I had gotten the feeling that I was to share my experience with anyone that would listen, basically, and uh, mm. maybe help them. Yeah, my in, yeah. In These uh, near death experience stories are so fascinating, and on the channel we share shared death experiences and um, out of body experiences and all kinds of very out of the ordinary kinds of <laughs> experiences that um, more and more we're realizing that this it's not so unordinary there's a lot of these kinds of experiences going on so and i love them you know i'm curious darlene did you um in your childhood or teenager or young adulthood did you have any supernatural experiences before no, your near-death experience uh, no nothing whatsoever oh uh, other okay. than spiritual uh here on earth well, however you want to put it uh feeling of the Lord coming into my life, that kind of thing, but mm. nothing supernatural. That's what it was totally caught me off guard when it happened. Right. I but it was, it was just too much. I had to believe it because I knew I was living it. Yeah. My eldest son afterwards, when I tried to explain it to him, wouldn't believe me he said I was dreaming but oh, okay it, it was in the hospital and it was physically impossible <clears throat> excuse me after he discovered that 
scientifically, they have proved that near death does happen mm -hmm. uh, when someone is completely flatlined for yep. over a certain amount of time, but they're still conscious. So he couldn't argue that point. He had me, oh, well, maybe. Well, so, did you raise your kids uh, religious too? Yes, but yeah. he was one of the wayward ones. He had a negative influence from a family member that let's go party, you can do that instead of doing work and we can con, con people, it's easier. Mm. And he oh. kind of picked up on that mental oh. way of thinking until he figured it out that it that's not the way it works. And yeah, he made a 180 degree turn. Oh, very good. Well, Darlene, would you mind then um, sort of walking us up to your NDE? What what were the events before it happened, and then through? through your experience. Can you walk us through that? Okay. Okay. Um, I had had uh, injuries. I was a welder at a bus factory, school bus. And uh, there had been an injury where I had hernia repair. And the first one was done haphazardly and it oh. ripped out. So when they were repairing it a second time, uh, no, this was about 1998. This was about my fourth or fifth surgery mm. on hernia. So Man. I knew what to expect when they were putting me under. Mm -hmm. And I expected to go to sleep and wake up in recovery like mm -hmm. I had every other time. Yeah. And this time, they told me to start counting back from 100, which I did. And I got down into the 80s and nothing was happening. I was still going, okay, now what? Oh, no. And they wow. over and realized that the tubing was twisted. Oh, okay. So they untwisted the tubing. All the drugs rushed to my heart and stopped it. <gasps> Oh, come on. No, that does not, that, that sounds like malpractice. Yeah, I, that's what they said. And I said, no, they did me a favor. I got to go to heaven and see my mother. I don't want to sue them. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were all, oh, no, oh, no. Uh, they tried the paddles, but there was a, a medication or something that I was on where the bleeps were too far apart. So the paddles didn't work and they had to do ham CPR. But wow. I didn't know what was going on. All I know is I closed my eyes. When I opened them, I was in this beautiful wooded area, awesome colors. I mean, they're like the colors here on steroids. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that before, yeah. I could see a gold silver uh wall it was it was a weird color it wasn't gold or silver it was like mixed or something huh, okay. out of my peripheral vision but i didn't turn my head to it because i couldn't take my eyes off of what was in front of me and about 15 feet away was my mother and she was walking towards me with a smile and she had a lot of a rough life. She didn't smile too much, but she was then. She wasn't wearing glasses and she looked about 30. She had died in 1973 at the age of 62. Mm. And this happened about 1998. Okay. And she looked like she was 30. And she smiled and said, it's not your time yet. They still need you. Mm. So I'm yelling, who needs me, who? Mm -hmm. And then they said for two minutes and 34 seconds, then I could feel myself falling backwards. Uh, it wasn't scary or frightful or like you're falling off a building, 
I could just feel myself going back. And I yelled as at the beginning of it and said, does this mean I'm coming back? I said, I wanted to know, am I coming back here? It's wonderful. And the next thing I knew, I was on the table with an RN on top of me and yelling, we got her back, breathe, breathe. Uh, excuse the noise. Oh, that's okay. Um, anyway, I told them what happened and uh, they believed me because when they revived me, I didn't know it, but when I was yelling, does this mean I'm coming back? I was already on the table with the RN on top of me. Mm. And so I yelled it hmm. and I thought I was yelling it at my mom and I'm yelling it to the staff there. Wow, interesting. So they heard you verbalize that within your physical yeah. body. Huh. Yeah, and they said, uh, well, you must have went somewhere. I said, what happened? I was blah, blah, blah. Uh, almost just not hysterical, overjoyed, I think. Mm. And they said, well, the tubing was twisted and blah, blah. Uh, you flatlined for two minutes and 34 seconds. We're sorry. <laughs> We're sorry. That's okay. I got to have a, a trip, a free one, and got a sneak peek at heaven. It's wonderful. And that stuck with me for to this day. It's just as real. And I'm not suicidal by any means, but I can't wait to go back. Mm. It's just wonderful. Uh, the the green, the trees, the the lawn, forest lawn, whatever. And I never did really see that. It was a big wall that just went on, that silvery gold one. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. what it was. It, it struck me. A wall as a in a garden, you know, uh, a wall in a, in a garden. More of a forest there, not forest. It Meadow? Really a forest. Meadow a, or? Um... A, a lawn area and the trees, like there was a tree here and one here, and they were so vibrant. Would you say you saw colors that you couldn't describe here on this planet? Exactly. Oh, you. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like the colors we know of on steroids. It's okay. Just... Yeah, I've heard this in many of the NDEs, and not just that, but when they folk when you can focus <laughs> in on like a leaf or a branch, and then you can see all the minute detail. Like if you use your intention and focus in on it. I would have done that on the wall or the trees, but I was freaking out over seeing my mother. Oh, I bet. She had died when I was uh, just after, it was after my 18th birthday. And I had missed her all those those years. Yeah, yeah. Not seeing her and to see her again, it was just like a shot in the arm, like, yeah, she really was here and look how much better. And yeah, that's exciting. She told me they still need you. When I came back, I was thinking, well, she must be my family. Mm. But that's not what she meant. She meant need as in like I help around here. I help with people. Oh, uh, the okay. church, we have certain things. It's people in general. You help whomever you can when you can. Did she speak um, to you te telepathically or with verbally with her mouth? I think it must have been telepathically. I can't remember exactly if she was verbal. To me, she was talking to me and there was no mistaking what she said. But I was freaking out so much. I didn't notice if her mouth moved or not. She, I could, you know, no glasses. And when I came back and I told the staff what I saw, I hadn't even thought about no glasses that dawned on me later when I was talking about it. Wait a minute, she didn't have glasses on. <laughs> and it's just 
amazing to me how much younger we'll be. I can't wait yeah. to look 30 again. Of course, I was wearing glasses at 30, but hopefully my eyes will be perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't have to worry about eyesight. And when I came back, we talked a little bit there in uh, our winter recovery, and that was all there was to it. How long do you think you were, did it feel like you were there over on the other side? Uh, it felt to me like it was about two or three minutes. I mean, not even that. I, oh, okay. So it was quick for you. Very short time. But they said it was two minutes, 34 seconds. Okay. But to okay. me, it wasn't long enough. Well, some, some very often in these experiences, the near-death experiencer will be gone a couple minutes, but they'll feel like it was hours. So yeah. I, was just, I was just curious. Yeah, that's pretty much how you, how you describe it. I'm, uh, it felt like longer than what I was gone. I'm saying two or three minutes. It could have been hour or so because I was walking around mm. and then I saw her. Hmm. Taking it all mm. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you, like, where am I? You don't remember slipping away at all. You were just. No, it hit. Went so out quickly. and opened your eyes in another location. Yes. So no uh, other. They told me to count backwards and I was mm -hmm. expecting to go to sleep you know, and go under for surgery. I've had it before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect to open my eyes and see what I saw. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, didn't I just go under? You know, <laughs> so you felt like yourself. You knew who you were. Yeah, you I was me. <laughs> Excuse me. I was uh, me just like I am now. There was no, no difference and. Uh, the joy I felt was wonderful. It's just like your emotions are going, you're trying to take it all in. Overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. So you could hear, you could see. Do oh, you, yeah. Do you remember if you felt any sensations like a breeze or? Yeah. Oh, you could. Was, uh, okay. Light breeze. I was, I didn't look down at my legs, but I was walking. I knew. I was on my feet and I had arms and hands and okay. everything that way bodily. But yeah, that's seem very seem very physical then. Okay. And yeah. now <clears throat> did you sense love? I'm curious, love from your mother at all? Oh, or yes. okay, you this did. Tremendous amount of love. She was so there was so much love coming off her expression towards me when she said, they still need you. Okay. It's not my time yet. They still need you. Mm -hmm. And it was like a mother tenderly talking to her young child or something. And But now, would you say in that moment? In life, she wasn't really able to show affection or love that much. Oh, okay. She had a hard life. <clears throat> and uh, there, all the barriers were gone. She was ready just to throw her arms open, but I couldn't be, I knew that I couldn't be there because it wasn't my time yet. And I just went away with as much, that much information and can't wait to go back. Before I, I have a couple other questions, but before I go there, do you have any uh, um, interpretation of the wall? Any ideas what that could possibly have been? I, could it be a, a wall to the gate of the city, uh, an entrance way? I've seen stories of where you kind of check in when your when your death comes for real, mm. and they go in and kind of a what I'm trying to use uh, 
a center where they process you when you come uh -huh. in. Yeah, I've heard of that. And as I look back, that's the only thing I can think of hmm. <laughs> that and, it would be. <laughs> um, now, when she said you, it's time, you, they need you, you need to go back. And did you immediately start to fall? Or did you ask her a question? No, I was still there because I was saying, who needs me? Who? Who needs me? She didn't answer. And then you started to fall? Then back? I started to fall. And I was yelling, does this mean I'm coming back? Okay, so you didn't choose to come back. Would, would you have said, if she had given you a choice, would you have stayed? Probably. You would have, because it was so I knew, I knew I could think and process that my husband would be hurt and my adult children. Okay. But I knew uh, it was wonderful enough if I could have stayed, I would have. But I got the urgent feeling that I still had work to do here. Okay, so you set, did sense that. Yeah. When she was, when she, your mom was saying they need you. Yeah. Or was it after? I, okay. No, when she said it at first, I didn't understand. But then later, as I pondered it, uh, after I woke up, I began to realize what she meant. Mm. And That's the, why I yelled, who needs me? And the return was not unpleasant with the following no, back and going back into the body? At all. It was it just instantaneous. I mean, hmm. you could snap your finger and next thing I knew, I was on the table. Uh, mm -hmm. Yelling, does this mean I'm coming back? That's how quick it happened. Did they do the surgery? End up doing it? Yeah. They? Oh, they did. Not that they, same well, day. I had so much in me. They, they had to. Exactly. I think they, when, I don't think that, they redid it the next day. They just said, you go get some rest, honey. <laughs> um, Were you hoping for that to happen again to go visit yeah, your mom? Believe it or not, I thought, <laughs> you go again. You can do it if you want, guys. He said, no, no, we, we're just going to do the surgery and keep here. Because I remember joking about it, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that they could send me back if they wanted, you know. No, 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 we can't do that, uh, the surgical team. Mm. So, so there was a part of you that, yeah, you wanted to go back. But so what did your, how did this change your relationships with your spouse and kids? Did it have a positive or negative? At first, they didn't really want to accept it. I, I think my husband did, but he's still going. I think she hit her head a little too hard when she was gone. But uh, okay, honey, whatever you say, hmm. kind of attitude. And then I started checking into it. And realizing that there was more to it than what I knew. And the more I checked into it, uh, I'd watch these videos. And I'd say, see, see, how I wasn't making it up. Yeah, <clears throat> yep. And uh, it made a difference when they started watching the uh, other stories. And mm. people were afraid to talk about it at first because nobody believed them. Um, not too long ago, but yeah. now that they've gotten that science out there, they can't deny it anymore. Yes, yes. So you're, so you're meeting, now you've met more people who've had similar experiences or have had yeah. death experiences. Online, yeah. there's several. Uh, I told my story on, on a group through Facebook and there was 297,300 and something views on it. And um, I forget, something like 927 likes. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a popular topic, uh, more and more popular topic. And um, I'm glad because I love hearing these stories. I think it gives people hope and yeah, yeah people, exactly. most or a lot of people, I think, want to know what's going to happen in the afterlife. Not, not everybody. I'm always surprised when religious people are sort of um, 
skeptical that someone could have yeah. had a near-death experience because isn't that what their religion would say that yeah you're gonna you're be gonna alive on the other that. side exactly. so that always is surprising to me <laughs> it is to me too uh i've mentioned it to uh my pastor and of course he believes and the irony of it uh i see a gastroenterologist for problems with my belly from these surgeries uh a dr jones and mm -hmm. i told him what happened on that and he was ecstatic to hear about it oh uh, good he he's a joy to see he said that his wife is an ER surgical nurse. Mm -hmm. And she's had people that have had that happen on her shift and has shared it with him. Okay. And he That's said, awesome. I get to go home and tell her I've got I got a patient that went through it too. And he's a funny guy. That's he's awesome. Good. So did your feelings about or beliefs about death change? Yes. Then okay. Um, I always had the belief that heaven was real mm -hmm. and, you know, that's where we're going to end up. But when I went through that, it just, like I said, steroid, like I'm not just believing. The senses, it. yeah. Wow. That's what's waiting. <clears throat> and it's, it's amazing. It, I can't, I can't worry it. So would you say you were afraid of death before this experience? I wasn't looking forward to it, let's put it that way. I was apprehensive like anyone else. I just yeah. was something you push in the back of your mind and try not to think about. Yeah. Uh, and now you kind of look forward to it. There was <laughs> always that little question in the back of my mind, what if they're wrong? Uh, Is this really it? You know, uh, what if all this Jesus stuff isn't true? And that's always a thing back there. But uh, boy, I went through that. There's no question. Yeah. You, when you die, you just transcend to another life, a better one. Uh, hopefully. I've heard stories of people, a pastor even, that has went the other way and mm -hmm. was able to come mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. yep. uh, yes and, indeed uh, it's amazing yes i've interviewed people who have had the hell experience and um also that and in the same nde and then have the heaven experience yeah after that. that's amazing so you got your attention <laughs> So your pastor and your church, were they accepting and believed and oh yeah, no pro sure. no questions? Yeah. Oh. They were, they were happy to hear it. Uh, I think pastor had a friend of his wife had explained a uh, near death several uh, years earlier or a few years earlier, but I was the first one. We have a small congregation. And uh, we're close knit like family, but uh, he was really happy to hear it. Um, he's real cool. He's a, a 75 year old retired cop hmm. and he's got a big heart. Um, yeah, they, they were all accepting at the church. Of That's that. good. That's good then. Some people come back with um, psychic <laughs> abilities or they start seeing spirits or um, after death communication with that. loved ones. No, I don't have anything like that. I just uh, am looking forward to that day again when I can transform over there and not have to come back. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that so now are you are you living your life differently today would you say as a result i believe i am i am more patient more giving uh i don't get angry and frustrated as easily not that i never do but um 
I'm more likely to try to help these folks around here that need it. Uh, I volunteer to clear dishes from the dining room tables and here every meal or lunch and dinner so the staff can be with uh, the residents that need the help. Mm -hmm. So I grab my little cart and start clearing plates and whatever else needs to be done. And it takes a lot off them because then they can concentrate on who needs, some of them need to be fed, some of them need uh, in a wheelchair and they need to go to the restroom and stuff, whichever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I get more pleasure out of the volunteering because I can meet and talk to some of these people and that some of them have amazing life events or stories oh, yeah yeah um, I told two or three of them about my near death one I think what happened to me them uh a couple of months ago there was a man in here by the name of John Nix mm -hmm. he was 91 he was suffering and wanting to leave mm. this world mm -hmm. Uh, his daughters were holding him back from being on hospice and they were wanting him to walk down to the dining room. They didn't want to let him go. Oh, oh. And for some reason they were standing there getting ready to leave <clears throat> and they looked so down in the dumps and I just had this urge come over me. I don't know, some call it called the spirit. I don't know to talk to them. And I shared that story with them. And both girls started to cry, women. And uh, the older one said, my God, you're an answer. And this is what blew me away. You're an answer to prayer. Oh she my said, gosh. I prayed this morning that I could get some kind of a message that it was okay to let him go. They came in the wow. next day, put him on hospice, and he passed away in two days. Wow. They came and gave me a hug. Wow. I think that's what she meant by they still need you. Mm -hmm. I would and think, that, you'd, yes, the story. I would think you'd be telling everyone. Yeah. And because bragging about it's not what's supposed to happen. Uh, there was another family. They were, uh, it was their grandfather. And uh, they were just so upset about leaving him. And I took them to Ephesians 3, where there's a time to be born, a time to die, and told them that story. And I said, it's his time. And the woman was pregnant. The younger granddaughter mm -hmm. was about eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's a time to be born. Mm -hmm. They came back. Uh, he passed away. It took him about three days. They came over and knocked on my door and just cried in my arms. Wow. And I told him, it, it's okay. Wow. And it was his time. He's in a better place because they knew what I told him. Mm. And then they came back about a month, almost two months later, with that new baby mm. and I said there you go time to be born and they were you know that's what I get here that's... and I this is why I've stayed here mm -hmm. there are so many people when they need prayer or something they'll come and get me and if I can help anybody with their grieving with their whatever that's the best thing I can take away from that they still need you it's hard mm -hmm. for um most of the time it seems like for loved ones to let go of the one who's passing and the one who's passing I've heard many many times they can hold on if they feel like they're needed they'll they'll hold on and hold on and hold on this happened uh with a man named Rick he had his wife and his mother here. He was in his early 40s. He had some kind of brain cancer. <laughs> and he held on, held on. 
would sit on the couch in the living room area. He would not go to bed. And I shared with his mother the story and she was teared up and everything. Yeah. He finally gave in. It took him almost two weeks to finally let go. He wasn't eating or drinking anything. And he was literally starving himself to death. Oh, man. But they wow. they finally were able to have peace. Yeah. Wow. What, how difficult. You must see a lot of uh, death then in your work, in your yeah, volunteering. It's just part of life. It's the other end of the spectrum. And I get to see the beginning uh, when I'm with my seven-year-old granddaughter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my daughter and stuff. There's still a lot of life out there. That's why I leave, go to church, do this, that, and the other. And uh, at the end of the day, I come back and put on a movie or something and relax. And you would, but you would say that it's really not death, but it's life after life. I'm, I'm assuming exactly. it's a whole new life with even heightened senses, apparently. And exactly. um, do you believe in reincarnation? Do you have any opinions about I that? Never, I've never really experienced with anything like that. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say no, 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 it doesn't exist, but I'm not a firm believer in it um i think once you pass and you go to where you're going that's where you're at for eternity at least that's what our religion teaches us i was i was going to ask you have your religious beliefs uh evolved since the near-death experience would you say as a result of the near-death experience well, I'm, I've got a lot more faith than I used to. Mm -hmm. um, Are there certain doctrines that you don't buy into anymore in of your church? No, I'm, it's always been the same church thing, uh, saved, baptized uh, kind of thing. That's, that's still the same. <clears throat> and, and why do you feel like um, you had this experience? Is there a purpose for it? Uh, I think I had the experience because the medical team screwed up, but <laughs> true. Uh, <laughs> yep, very true. I was able to go there. Maybe in a way, my mother was trying to edify my life and saying, hey, you do have a purpose mm -hmm. because of her dying. And I was such a young age. I was like, and I didn't yeah. really have any, but my father yeah. died when I was five months. Oh. No grandparents, anything. So wow. I was pretty much on my own. Hmm. And in a way, I think she was able to positively let me know that I had a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't just here at a past time. And you're just now sharing uh, publicly? This is your first no, interview? I've talked about it for the last 10 years or so. I started to talk about oh. it and I got so much from my son and stuff that I just oh, didn't I say see. too much. Right. And then I started going on uh, Facebook a few years ago and seeing that, hey, there's others out there. There's Lots. more to it than that. Yep. And yeah, that's when I decided to speak up. And it, it kind of went viral on me, that post I had. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I saw your post saying, is anyone willing to be videoed? And I'm going, I will. <laughs> well, this uh, is a beginning. Maybe you will do more of these kinds of interviews. Uh, you know, these stories are amazing, so they should be shared. Yeah, because um, there's people out there that just need that little bit of hope mm -hmm. that their loved one is going to be all right or they are going to be all right if they're older and yeah. even if they're not because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know, there's 
anything can happen. I've learned that through watching news or watching anything that we're yeah. not promised. Yeah. We just get up and I thank God for every day I get up and ask him to help me be a blessing to someone that day. Mm-hmm. And the more I concentrate on others and their problems, my problems don't seem that bad. Oh, yeah. Very. Yeah, it's a very good advice. Yeah, I believe that as well. Darlene, how can the listeners connect with you if they want to reach out and maybe learn more or just it's connect? Facebook Messenger. Okay. That. Facebook Messenger. I'll put that link in the video description. And I don't really have a phone except for this one here. But if they they can't get through on Messenger, uh, the phone here, they'll what? call me the phone. Well, I don't know that I'll put that in the description. So how about email? Is that okay? That'll work. Okay, we'll do email and um, I'll put that in the description. Okay. So before I sign off, Darlene, what I like to do with my guests is just leave them with the last words. Anything else you on your heart that you felt like you wanted to share and did it, didn't get a chance to share or just words of encouragement or hope? Yeah that there is more out there. And the ones I talk to, if you put others first and try to uh, help others, it'll take the need off your own problems. Yeah. And you'll be surprised at the blessings you get back tenfold over and over. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. I asked the Lord to help me quit smoking. This has happened three times. Uh-huh. Blessed me with bronchitis. Mm. And mm. it worked because I can't smoke. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Be careful what you pray for. I see. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. The well, way I put it, he blessed me with bronchitis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not smoking. I'll get over it, but smoking. I won't be smoking when I'm done good well I'm glad want you to be healthy oh yeah well thank you so much Darlene I've really appreciated your time um, and you sitting and sharing your story I appreciate you too Joy thank you for the opportunity to make this video yes my pleasure and um, thank you to everyone watching this has been Julie McVeigh with unordinary made ordinary and if you enjoyed this video please give it give it a thumbs up and if you like the type of content we're sharing on the channel channel please subscribe and you can hit the bell icon if you want to be alerted to future videos and I do hope you are all having a wonderful day or evening wherever you are on the planet or off the planet and we will see you all next time bye-bye thank you Julie